We hear it all the time. Congress is broken. Everyone is dissatisfied. More and more proposed reforms focus on facilitating majority power, like in a European parliament. But it's not clear what problem that would solve. The trouble with Congress isn't that majorities can't get their way. It's that forging durable compromises seems impossible. But compromise is Congress's job, and if compromise can't happen, then Congress can't work. So what might make it better? To fix Congress, we'll need a clearer understanding of the problem. For too many members, Congress has become just a platform for performative outrage. Congress is failing as an institution now, and its foundering stems from a lack of institutional commitment. To start, it might be helpful to think about an American institution that seems to be doing better, Major League Baseball. Hugh Hecklow made this case in his book on thinking institutionally. Baseball has certainly had scandals, but it generally functions well as a self-correcting institution. The sport shapes the players rather than the other way around. Participants follow a code of conduct and a set of rules. While baseball can be a platform for ostentatious show-offs, the most enduring appreciation mostly goes to players who exemplify sportsmanship on the field. Unfortunately, members of Congress have given up on the practice of mature statesmanship and only want to bask in the media spotlight. Instead of engaging in the intense process of crafting legislation, senators and representatives have chosen to use Congress as a platform for their own partisan displays. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez offers one example. She revs up her supporters by trolling opponents on social media. She promotes legislation like the Green New Deal, sensational but fundamentally unpassable, designed to appeal solely to her base. The decision by 30 Republicans to storm a closed-door impeachment hearing is another example. While they delayed witness testimony for a few hours, this dramatic moment did nothing to alter the House's decision to move forward with impeachment. But it did play well with supporters watching on cable news. While partisan showdowns, vitriolic confirmation hearings, and nasty Twitter battles may look like home runs in the moment, they're vacuous political theater. Meanwhile, Congress fails to carry out many of its basic responsibilities, like passing budgets, and it delegates key legislative functions to other branches of government or the ballooning administrative state. Why is this happening? One answer is that members of Congress don't want to be responsible for difficult decisions, so they pass vague legislation while letting judges, bureaucrats, or the president hammer out the details. It's a bipartisan vice. But a more fundamental reason lies in our culture, which has blurred the lines between politics and entertainment. Transparency is vital, but only up to a point. While Watergate exposed the need for increased congressional accountability, the reforms that followed also overturned the rules and norms that had previously socialized House members and senators to work together. Television will change this institution, Mr. Speaker, just as it has changed the executive branch. The arrival of C-SPAN in 1979 further eroded the closed spaces that had allowed for careful negotiation while giving politicians an audience for grandstanding. Oh, here, Mr. President, catch this. Mm -hmm. Putting Congress back on track would require a variety of measures designed to commit its members to its constitutional prerogatives, like rethinking the budget process for a politically divided era, recreating space for private deliberation, and rewarding individuals who work through rather than outside the legislative process. Congress should be incentivized to view itself as a mold of its members' ambitions and characters, not just a platform for political performance art. Until then, it will remain the weakest branch of government. To learn more about the institutional challenges facing our government, check out the link to my book, A Time to Build, in the description below. Also, let us know what other topics you'd like AI scholars to cover on Rethink Tank, and be sure to subscribe for more videos and research from AI.